engage in a number of activities beyond the classroom that are an integral part of our core mission. For instance, we provide health care. As the only academic health system in South Florida, we educate the next generation of health professionals as we research new ways to treat and prevent disease. We also engage in tech innovation, translating our discoveries into solutions to complex challenges, often in partnership with outside entities. Athletics is another way, another vital way, that we engage with and enhance the community of which we are a part. Intercollegiate competition in sports supports comprehensive education, linking health in mind and body, enriching the college experience for participants and ex spectators alike, and created pathways to higher education for many young people who, whether they go to, on to play their sport professionally or not, are often trailblazers and role models for their families and communities. Each of these activities is integrated to our core mission, generating sources of support so we can continue investing in talent. In short, our historic commitment to athletics is not a deviation from our core mission. It is an investment in a unifying force. We have seen that force for good in the past. Hurricane, hurricane athletics, and football in particular, as our beloved former coach, coach Howard Schnellenberger put it, was, and I quote, was able to do something the federal government, city and county, tried to do and couldn't, bring the community together, end of quote. At a time when division threatens the very fra fabric of the human family, that is a tradition I am proud to reinvigorate for our university's future. I appreciate the confidence and partnership of the Board of Trustees, the hard work by our leadership team and key supporters to conduct a successful search for our next athletic directors, director, and the warm welcome our Deputy Athletic Director Jane Strolley, our coaches, and our staff are already giving Dan. The future looks bright for our Miami Hurricanes. Dan Radakovic has the ingenuity, business acumen, and reputation as a high-performing leader that we need at this moment to navigate and shape the disruption occurring in intercollegiate athletics and to empower our talented student athletes to succeed both on and off the field. On behalf of the entire University of Miami community and Hurricane sports fans around the world, I am delighted to welcome Dan back to Miami. So it gives me great pleasure to introduce our new Vice President and Director of Athletics, Ran Dan Radakovic. Thank you. Wow, that was great. Thank you so much for that uh, very kind introduction, President Frank. Um, it's, uh, it's an incredible honor and pleasure to be here today. Uh, I want to thank President Frank, Chairman Silver, Rudy Fernandez, Joe Echeverria, Jackie Travisano, David Epstein, Jose Moss, and Manny Cadre uh, for the, the interactions that I've had over the last uh, couple of weeks uh, here with the University of Miami. Uh, it's been special. Um, they've represented the institution incredibly well and were able to move forward with uh, their vision for what they want Hurricane Athletics uh, to be. And I think President Frank talked about it very well there. Uh, we're a part, athletics is a part of the greater university uh, community. And we need to be a shining example of, of integrity, uh, innovation, commitment. Those are things that maybe you don't always hear about from an athletic program, but that's important for us. Uh, it's important for us to play that role uh, in our campus community. I also just want to take a second to thank uh, all my friends back at, at Clemson University, fellow at, uh, Atlantic Coast Conference member, uh, President Jim Clements, uh, former President Jim Barker, uh, who nine years ago uh, gave me the opportunity to uh, come to Clemson. We had a, 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 a have, Clemson has 
uh, really great alignment between their board, their president, their athletic director, and their coaches, and again, particularly in football, and it's really been able to pull together that success. Uh, so with, with the information that we have here and the opportunity that we have here, that's uh, job one, to be able to make sure that everyone is rowing in the right direction, pulling together and, and making sure that our student athletes have a great experience and our coaches have the resources uh, to do theirs. I'd like to thank my wife Marcy, uh, who's here with us tonight. She's the, she's the rock. Um, all of you who are in um, roles at an institution or coaching or whatever uh, know that athletic director wives or coaches' wives, um, they are just spectacular individuals. And, and Marcy, I love you. Thank you. Um, my two boys, uh, have often heard me talk about uh, my time at Miami. Now, they weren't born yet. Uh, they both live and, and work in Atlanta. Uh, special young men, uh, love them to death, and so now they'll get an opportunity to witness uh, the greatness of the U, and I'm really, really looking forward to that. I also have to say, because um, I've known Blake James for years, I appreciate Blake James, I appreciate the work that he's done, uh, he is a friend and a colleague, and uh, I look forward to following some of the things that, that he's pulled together, along with Jen Strawley, who President Frank also uh, mentioned. Just a great staff here uh, that I'm looking forward to, to really getting to know and, and help uh, do the things that are needed and necessary uh, within, that pro within the program. Uh, now. I've had conversations with some of our coaches, some of our staff, but really look to dive into that whenever I start uh, come the early part of January. There's a lot of work to be done. And for all of you who are involved in athletics, you know that there are many ways to get the same thing done. We're going to try to do it the way that, it's, that it fits the University of Miami and allows us to have the greatest uh, success that we can. I will spend a lot of time over the next coming months uh, engaging, listening, learning uh, from everybody in the department and within the university community. Uh, it's going to be it's going to be very important for us to for me to know and understand that as we chart the next course uh, for the University of Miami athletics program. Uh, you may. Some people may have understood, you know, I've done a lot of building at some of my other stops along the way. Uh, facilities are important. They're important uh, for attracting uh, really great student athletes to come here. But facilities are just brick and mortar. It's always has been and always will be about people. So we want to put people first, but we want to make sure that the facilities we have uh, are at the best that they can be. You know, our current campus partners, uh, our generous supporters, our passionate fans and alumni, our former and current student athletes, our coaches, our staff and community, when they come together, there's nothing, there's nothing that we can't accomplish as hurricanes. Uh, so with that, President Frank, thank you so much. It's an honor and a privilege uh, to lead the University of Miami athletic program. Thank you very much. Hey Dan, uh, hey Dan, Gary Furman, Kane Sport. Welcome back to the U. Thanks, um, Gary. You know, you talked about facilities, and facilities are obviously always the focal point, no matter what the athletic program is. And it's it's always been a focal point here, but it's not always spoken in the most positive of terms. I know you just got back here, and 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 you probably haven't even looked at everything around yet. But um, is that something that came up? while you were interviewing and do you expect to really hit the ground running in that regard? Well, I, I do. Um, you know, as I just said, facilities are important, people are, are important, there's, there's a lot of factors there that go into it. You've got to be able to look and see exactly where your strengths are and where maybe you need some a, a additional assistance right away. Um, but just know that there will be a full review and understanding of everything that we have here from a facility perspective and how we could make that make that work best. 
uh, for our student athletes and for our, our university community. Uh, it is important, um, but I can't tell you right now uh, you know, where exactly that first focus is going to be. Uh, there'll just be a full review of everything and, and listening to a lot of the folks that are in this room uh, as to what they might feel might be uh, most important right away, especially our coaches. Hi, Dan. Uh, David Lake from Inside the U. Uh, wanted to ask you just if you could explain the ROI that you saw at Clemson with investing heavily in athletics. You know, beyond the community aspect and, and school pride aspect, how did it benefit the university as a whole? Uh, that's a great question. Um, you know, Clemson's a public university, so you can all um, look this up if you had the desire to do that. Uh, but football really was the train that allowed us to do everything else within the athletic program. Um, they made an incredible profit, um, mostly off of the 80,000 people that would come to Memorial Stadium for, for those game days, as well as our affiliation with uh, the Atlantic Coast Conference. Uh, that allowed us to do a lot of other things with, with some of our other sports. Uh, so yes, football is the economic engine. That's not a news flash for anybody in this room, uh, that's the way it is is at almost every Power Five uh, institution. So we need to make sure that that happens here. Uh, because when you, when you play a game at Hard Rock Stadium and you have a competitive program and you have a high-level uh, opponent coming in, uh, the revenue that comes forward from that will help generate opportunities for other parts of, of the uh, athletic program. Hi there, Ruthie Polinski with NBC6 here in South Florida. Um, I guess just having been in the ACC and watching the way that Miami operates from afar, what was it about coming here that attracted you and drew you away from Clemson? Oh, thank you, Brittany, for that question. Um, you know, I always knew, and we talked a little bit about this a few moments ago, the integrity piece. That, that was always a bedrock here. Um, and, and that's important. As an alum, that was one thing I always looked at. I mean, there were times along the way every athletic program gets into a little bit of an issue, but how do you respond? How do you fix it? How do you move forward? And, and that's something that Miami has done incredibly well. Uh, but as it relates to this opportunity, you know, it... When I'm sitting in my office and I see that diploma up there and I'm not part of the organization, uh, that, was, that was something that was really important to me. I always followed wherever the hurricanes go and I have a cadre of about you know, 15 or 20 friends that I went to school with that would always text and talk after great hurricane victories or difficult losses. So the opportunity to come back here and be a part of that and to influence it in some ways uh, was, just, uh, was just a great draw and just very, very fortunate to have the opportunity. Hey, hey, Dan, Manny Navarro from The Athletic. How you hey, doing? Hey, Manny. So I, I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't ask my, my neighbor's question. She's got uh, daughters that play softball, and uh, <laughs> I know that's a big deal here in South Florida. A lot of really good softball players come from, come from down here. Any thoughts about adding sports or any conversations about uh, a sport like softball that's big down here? Well, it sure is. And I got to tell you, uh, I'll tell you a funny story. My first day at the other school, uh, I got to my desk at 8 o'clock in the morning, and the first phone call I got was asking when Clemson was going to add softball. So you beat that because I'm not even at my desk yet. Um, but it's, it, it's something that we have to look at because we, number one, have to maintain compliance with Title IX. Uh, that, that's a federal law and something that's very, very important to us. And if adding softball helps us achieve that, within an incredibly difficult conference of the ACC, we've got to run down that road, turn over every rock, and see if that's the right answer. Any other questions for that? One more? Hey. Oh. Hey, yeah. I'm, I'm Susan Miller Degnan, Miami Herald. Welcome. Hi, Susan. Um, I know you talked about Clemson, you know, filling the football stadium. Um, and obviously, uh, well, Hard Rock does not usually with Miami. How do you, and I know how important it is, how do you, how do you begin to get people, you know, more people in the stands other than a winning team, or is that all it takes? Usually that's a great start. Uh, I've been in the business 35 years, um, and... 
you know, there's, you, you can't market your way to a full stadium. Um, but you've got to be able to make it something that people want to be a part of. You know, back when I was here as a student and also working here, I, we used to talk about Miami being an event city. And I don't know that that's changed over the 35 years. We have to make those seven Saturdays events. And, and make sure that the team is competitive, the opponents that come in, you know, draw some folks in there. And when they get there, to have an incredible, uh, an incredible time. Uh, so the presentation, how we, what we do in and around the stadium is really important as well. Uh, and I think if we do those, those things, we'll certainly make sure that we have uh, great attendance at Hard Rock Stadium. Yeah, Dan, Dave Hyde of the South Florida Sun Sentinel. You, you mentioned the third vertical uh, in our talk last week. Could you expound on that idea and sort of the business model that you're, you're stepping into or you're going to create? Sure. Um, you know, at, at the university, you have teaching and research. Here at the university, you have the health systems. And as I was told by the search committee and the people who were involved here, athletics is that third vertical. Um, because we probably do as much community outreach and branding as any part of the institution. Uh, so we want to make sure that that outreach and that branding are positive and successful. And if we do that, then I think that third vertical will really uh, solidify itself as, as part of the community here at the university. What's going on, Dan? Donovan Campbell, Channel 7, WSVN here in hey, South Don. Florida. Um, welcome back home. Thank you. Um, a lot of fans were super excited when they heard that Mario Cristobal was going to be the head coach. Um, a lot of fans were also super excited when they heard that you were going to be the athletic director. Just talk about the excitement level of you being here with Mario, like the fans are so excited about having you both here as well. Well, I've watched Mario from afar, um, not only uh, as a player here, but as he went through his um, personal coaching journey. I mean, what he did at Florida International was phenomenal. What he did uh, as part of Coach Saban's staff at, at Alabama uh, was, was very, very good. And then certainly at Oregon, uh, when he took the helm there uh, for the last few years, has been uh, spectacular. Uh, so he knows how to do it. And he's seen it. And he understands what it takes. And those are things that I think that both he from his vantage point and, and me from my vantage point, having been uh, at, at some really um, top caliber programs and help, help pull those together, we could take our, our collective knowledge and pull that together here to move the university forward. All right, I think that's all we got. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.